What's at stake when the number two and four ranked heavyweights step into the octagon on Saturday night? Okay, so this is a really good question because in a sort of normal world, what's at stake would maybe very well likely be a title shot, right? We have the champion fighting in about a month and change. Stipe Miocic, Francis Ngannou on March 27th. Uh, Lewis, you know, had that fight against Ngannou. Let's say Ngannou wins. It was a bad fight. I suspect if they fight again, it's a better fight. Curtis Blades has never fought for the belt. He has a history with Ngannou. He's trained in the past with Stipe. I mean, if you look at it normal times, like, yeah, this is a number one contender fight, Chael. The problem is John Jones is sitting on the sidelines, and rightfully so, they're giving him a title shot. Once this fight is over, he'll fight the winner. And thus, Curtis Blades in particular, who has won his last four in a row, and if he beats Derek Lewis, it will be five, is, is kind of in a tough spot. Curtis Blades told me, Chael, on Wednesday when I spoke to him, that, you know, there's a very good chance I'm not going to sit around and wait. This belt isn't defended all that often. I want to get paid. I want to fight. I want to support my family. Maybe I'll fight a Jarzino Rosenstrike. Maybe I'll fight a Surreal Gagne. He certainly is not going to fight an Alexander Volkov. He just beat him in June. It wasn't the greatest fight. He shouldn't have to run that one back. But if Derek Lewis wins, all right, there's a few more options there. Basically, what's at stake here? You're one fight away. You're one win away after this one. We're fighting for a belt, and also you kind of just cement your spot as the number one contender in the division outside of John Jones. That's a lot. That means a lot. That means you're well on your way to getting a big time fight. But unfortunately, the winner of this fight is definitely not going to be fighting for the belt because John Jones is sitting and waiting. And by the way, Ariel, everybody is a big fan in the broad stroke, everybody. They love uh, Derek Lewis. Nobody likes. Curtis Blades, I'd like to know why. I feel as though I missed something because if I was to walk you down memory lane of Curtis Blades, okay, he goes down there and fights Engano. You can talk about who the best is. You can talk about who the fastest is. There is no discussion on who is the scariest fighter in MMA. That specific word specifically goes to Engano. Curtis Blades goes out there and does it. It doesn't go well. What does Blades do? He begs for a rematch. Guess what? They gave him one in a different country. Got in an airplane, inconvenienced himself, and got his butt kicked a second time. What does he do? He begs for a third shot. Errol, those are the kind of guys that become legends. Those are the kind of guys that the fans love. Those are the kind of guys that the media members and pundits praise and give rub to. Why is Curtis not getting that? And I'm, I'm asking you not tongue-in-cheek. I'm asking you sincere. Was he rude somewhere that was caught on videotape? Was he in trouble somewhere that I missed along the way? Curtis Blades apparently did something to somebody. I didn't see it. Why is Blades not no. the star that he should be for the willingness that he possesses? Just ask Kamara Usman. He doesn't have that sort of flashy, striking style. He's a wrestler who likes to grind out wins sometimes, not always. Remember, his win over Alistair Overeem was very impressive. But, you know, you're, you're kind of viewed on how you performed in your last fight. He was very much criticized for his victory over Alexander Volkov, which, by the way, has aged beautifully. Just how, look, just how good did Volkov look against Alistair Overeem? Remember that just a couple of weeks ago? And, and look what he did to sure. Alexander Volkov back in June. Um, you know, Curtis Blades has been outspoken about fighter pay and, and saying that fighters deserve more money. After his fight, Dana White took some shots at him, didn't like that narrative and said, hey, if you're going to talk about fighter pay, you better perform a little more, you know, excitedly than that. And so I think that narrative kind of comes out there and fans start to run with it. But this man deserves only praise. He's one of the best heavyweights on the planet. And what I appreciate most about Curtis Blades, the man is a straight shooter. When I asked him about John Jones, Getting a title shot before him, he said, I get it. He's a big star. He deserves a title shot. Didn't whine, didn't moan. Kudos to you. When I asked him, will you wait for the winner of that fight to fight again if you beat Derek Lewis? He said, probably not. I want to be active. I want to get paid. How do you not like that guy? How do you not respect that guy? Also, I love the fact that he said, if anyone didn't like my fight against Alexander Volkov, guess what? I'm bringing my wrestling shoes on Saturday. Tell Derek Lewis to figure it out. <laughs> Hey, I like that, and I do remember the time when Blades was working in the media. Well, I'm just a wrestler, and I'm just looking to get paid, and I don't care. I mean, not, nothing that you would want to hear, but in fairness, he did go out and show that he was getting a lot better, okay? Not only with Volkov did he stand and trade, worked it into takedowns, I understand. I watched that fight, but there's been other fights where he's gone out there and really shown those hands. So Curtis Blades, what he likes to tell the media as a way of acting like your criticism doesn't hurt me, it's very clearly getting better in the room. And I mean, even stepping in there with Derek Lewis is something that not a lot of people want to do. And I would like to go back to that Volkov fight, because I do think the Blades was overlooked, and I do like that you said, like a fine wine, this thing's getting better with time. But don't forget, that was his first time. 
Chuck and Curtis Blades going all 25 minutes. Excuse me. Yes, a guy might shut down at some point. Perhaps he used a little too much energy, but strategically, he showed the courage and hung in there. Look, I don't get how Curtis isn't a bigger star. I feel as though, Errol, he did something somewhere along the way that I just don't know what it was. I never saw it. I've only seen good things from this man. Yeah, and you know, the small cage has kind of been a lost narrative over the last few months. I think the small cage really helps Curtis Blaze. I don't know if it helps Derek Lewis. They'll be fighting in that smaller cage on Saturday at the Apex. I am looking forward to it. 5 p.m. Eastern, prelims, right here on the platform that we built, ESPN+. Plus. There's like 9 million prelim fights on this card. I think 15 fights total, to be exact. It is a loaded card, and then the main card begins at 8 p.m. Eastern again on ESPN+. Plus. So just stick with us the entire night, and I think that you will be very happy about that.